it's fine. It's not really acting up anymore. <laughs> Now then YouTube, sorry that my voice is a bit broken but I'm a little bit ill. Uh, my Volvo's broken. Drop that down a little bit. My Volvo's broken. So is my voice, I know, everything's broken this week. Um, we've not done any barn videos for a while, so I know this needs some TLC. But, I've, I've been daily driving the E46. And as nice as a car it is, I just don't like, I've said it, I've said it before, I just don't like daily driving a, a, a nice car, you know. I don't, I don't really enjoy it. And, in a minute, my main concern is my Volvo. So I was driving up to um, Aysgarth, which is about an hour kind of into the Dales, like some, some really nice roads. Friday night, it was chucking it down. Right, there was so much water everywhere. I was in the Volvo. Uh, I was having a real good drive. You know, it was all right. You're practicing my left foot braking, ready for the track day, you might have noticed. So, you know, I'm having a, I'm having a real good drive. And then when, when I got the bits that I needed, it was some uh, seatbelt buckles for the MR2, for the passenger seat. And then I'm shooting it back home and I'm having a real good drive again. And then I'm flying down this road, and uh, there's a lot of puddles in the road. We've been in the country, there's not a lot of drainage for, uh, for water to go, so when it rains heavy, then you get a lot of puddles in the road. So you can kind of guess where I'm getting to now. So I hit a few of them, and you know, no real issue, just like skimmed through, but ended up being this real savage, massive one. And I was coming down this country road, going faster than I should have been. I was, you know, I was doing about 60, which, you know, quite, quite bad rain. I was going faster than what I should have been anyway, and this puddle just came out of nowhere, and unfortunately there was a car coming the other way, so I couldn't just swerve around it like, like I was doing on the previous ones. So I had to go straight through this puddle, and um, initially the car felt all right, but there was a lot of water, water went you know, all over. So uh, you know, I, was a bit, I was a bit worried that I might have hydrolocked it or something at first, but it carried on running fine, and then, well, up until the point when it didn't run fine, which was about half a mile later, I'm um, driving down the road and the um, car started misfiring, getting a real jerky through the gears and yeah, it wasn't happy. So I pulled over to the side of the road in a safe place and as I did that the car died and uh, wouldn't restart. Then I got out of the car and started checking things, looking at the bonnet and things like that and I noticed it's a glowing from, uh, from the exhaust from underneath. And what the fuck's that? So I, I got down and had a look under the side of the car and uh, this is what I found. There's a lot of a lot of redness around my downpipe where it goes to the catalytic converter, so a lot of heat there. Um, you know, I posted the picture on Instagram and everyone was instantly telling me, your cat's blocked, your cat's blocked, but after doing a bit of research, we think it could be actually more related to the misfire and the fact that that's just all kind of unburnt fuel getting kind of ignited in the exhaust and getting real hot. And the cat did, you know, just appear to be blocked anyway. And I, I, I've got a theory on that as well. It might actually be blocked because I, I might have put too much oil in it. So there's quite a few things going on here with the Volvo, you see. And all we need to do is kind of see where we're at. Now, the Volvo is a 20 year old car, it's an old car, but you can use an OBD, OBD, yeah, OBD scanning uh, tool on it. And that's something that I've never bought before. I've never had a, a scan tool. I've always had uh, like car specific ones like Vagcom or Imper. Um, I've always had specific ones, but never like a universal thing. So, mixed garage, I've ordered one today. That should be here tomorrow, hopefully. Um, but today we're going to do some kind of old school investigation, I guess. Now the Volvo has a, a distributor for the ignition, uh, no coil packs or anything like that. It's, it's just like my B18 was. And whenever I had a misfire on my B18 in, in the Integra, it was always distributor related. So I think what I'm going to do today is just have a look at the Dizzy, take the cap off, maybe clean up the connectors and stuff like that, see if there's any water got in there, see if there's any moisture in there that could be giving us issues. And, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can find out what's wrong. Now, one thing to note is we've got no warning lights at all in the car, so I'm not that sure that the scan tool is going to give us that much information anyway. So, I'll just have to try it and see. First off, let's, uh, let's start the car and just see, see what it does. Cause it will start now, it wouldn't start on Friday night, but then when we did recover the car, um, it started and pulled itself onto the trailer. There was a bit of a misfire, but uh, nothing too severe. So let's, uh, let's go and start the car and see what happens. Right, so I've not started the Volvo for a couple of days, so it should start, I think, but we're just going to give it a first try now, live on camera. Not quite live, but you know what I mean. First start, right? Try and list for this misfire. Okay, no misfire as of yet. <laughs> I'll let you know when it starts. Right guys, so the Volvo's been running for about 10 minutes now and we've got no misfire yet. 
So maybe it's just had a chance to dry itself off and it's all right now. But I'm gonna give it a rev and then we'll see if it misfires kind of like a higher RPM, maybe three grand or something like that. It was definitely misfiring the other day, now it's not. But with it having a distributor for the ignition, getting wet and then drying out, could add up. So maybe we don't need to fix anything. Maybe it's fixed or maybe it's just, you know, need its rest. It's an old girl. But yeah, I'll give it some revs now and then we'll see if it misfires high up. Fine, no? uh, the car seems fine, so let's go for a test drive and we'll see if it, once it gets a bit warmer or something, it starts acting up. I don't know, it's going to be a bit of a shit video, this if we actually fix anything, but yeah, let's go for a drive and see. Okay, we're out in the wild in the Volvo, and uh, yeah, it's still definitely got a misfire or there's something not quite right with it. So what's happening is it's accelerating okay-ish till about 4,000 RPM, then it just seems to like hit a wall. But it also kind of feels like it's stuck in second gear, which is weird. Like it doesn't seem to just shift up or shift down. It seems to set off in second and then stay in second. And what the fuck? Oh, cyclists. Oh. You don't want that on your test road, do you? They're gonna about to eat some T5 down there. But yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick clip just driving past. I've got my tripod with me, so you can kind of hear it, I guess. I didn't bring my GoPro, so I can't kind of show you an in-car view. But yeah, it's it's like a it's like a weird hesitation. It doesn't seem to want to be shifting gears. So, but I've still not changed the automatic transmission fluid yet. So we need to do that at some point. Maybe that's a good call to do it. Just kind of rule it out. But how could that have? How could water have? Could water have got in my transmission? It's not making any sense, is it? Right, so we're going to do a pull in the Volvo. Hopefully you can hear the misfire. This is probably the most pointless video I've ever made on YouTube. But this is why you subscribe to me, right? This is it, yeah? This is why you subscribe, yeah? Right, sound. It's fine. It's not really acting up anymore. Uh, I think we'll just go back to the unit. Right, back at the unit. Volvo's back. We're gonna have a look at it in a second. Um, change the auto box fluid, see if that helps. I just looked and it's brown and it's never been changed. To what I know, the previous owner never changed it. He had the car about three years, so it's pretty fucked. Um, one thing that's also pretty fucked, um, you might have seen in a couple of videos, a lot of people have been asking me about this car. There's been a Lexus LS400 in the unit and it's been getting all, you know, stanced up and showed out and stuff and a lot of you have been commenting on it, wanting to see it and I was going to show you when it was done. I was going to show you because it was, it was almost done last week and then uh, it had a slight problem. So I'm just going to show you and then you can make your own mind up what's happened. Yeah. Not had the best time there, have you? Nope. All your, all your stance wheels all, all nice and stancy and then fucking the rear toe arm. What happened was the rear toe arm snapped uh, when Harley was driving it and yeah. Rip. It's not good, is it? 
Doing a good job, though. What can you do? Yeah, the, the boot's nice, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> This is why you don't build stance cars, everyone. This is what happens. You try and stance once and this is what happens. That's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> this door is definitely the best, I'd say. Inside is the best. She will oh. Yeah, nice. Bit of tea cut on that, you know. That's what all the internet always says, isn't it? Take up gaffer tape. Yeah, man. Get some tie wraps, we'll sort it out. So yeah, everyone that wants to see the Lexus LS400 gonna have to wait a little bit longer now. That's, uh, yeah, he's, he's bought another one and gonna reshell it and move everything across. So what happened was the rear toe arm snapped and he was driving at about 60 mile an hour on some country roads and, um, yeah, the roads around here are pretty savage. You've seen when I've been driving about, there's you know, trees and bushes everywhere, and unfortunately, it went straight into a. Uh, you must have hit a tree and then a few bushes and stuff, right? Yeah, pretty bad, right? Right, so I got the Volvo up in the air, and I've drained the old transmission fluid just with the plug at the bottom. Um, if you see anyone else doing this on YouTube, you'll see that they'll flush it and they'll, they'll do all this fancy stuff, but all I'm going to do is drain what's in the box, what I can, and then uh, refill it and see what happens because the oil that came out was very very dirty it's brown uh, real brown town i can show you in a second it's still still draining ever so slightly now but i just want to show you the rig what i'm using to put fluid back in because there's not actually a fill uh, hole or anything like that on the uh, on the gearbox you have to fill it through the dipstick tube which is it's a pain to get to anyway to the dipstick for the uh, transmission fluid and um yeah you see a lot of people with you know fancy uh, funnels and stuff like that and it, lo it looks like a pain in the ass. So, what did I do? I got this pump from Mix, right? And I fancied playing one of these for a while, it's just a 12 volt um, fluid pump. And um, it's got a tube on the end which will go right into the dipstick. And then you can kind of see, I've already started rigging it up. Um, it's got a tube into the dipstick and then you've got another tube, obviously into your transmission fluids and then you just press a button and go. But we'll see. I'll give you a closer look at what we're going to be doing. Right, okay, so we'll go up this top first. So there's my uh, transmission oil. It's uh, Dextron free fluid is what you need for these in case you're curious. Tell me where else to find it out. So we've got the tube going in there. Lovely red new ATF. And then it goes into this little pump. Which is connected to the battery, which is conveniently right next to where it wants to be, which is good placement, thanks Volvo. And then you've got the other tube out the arse end of that, and that goes into the dipstick tube, which is kind of right down there. And yeah, I can't find my torch, I'm trying to torch down there, but it's, you can kind of just see it's just there, kind of where the red stops, that's where the tube starts. And I've, I've fit it all the way in, and um, you yeah, know, all we need to do is flick the switch. And then, you can see the red fluid coming out already. Let's stop that, let me get a torch. Right, so I appreciate you can't really tell, but what's coming out there now is fresh red fluid, and what was in there is brown town. It's horrible, you can't see. I'll bring it out in the light in a bit. But uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is, I'll put my uh, plug back in. I'm just gonna run it through a few times, just to give it some fresh oil, hopefully. This is my version of a flush. Just pumping some fluid through. As you can see that. Nice and red. That's good. That'll probably do it, I reckon. Whoa, it's done. Christ, okay. This is faster than what I thought. I thought it was going to be real slow, but it's not. It's done a litre. And I've only had it on for like 30 seconds, maybe max. So, um, yeah, I've heard these things are pretty slow, but this one seems pretty fast. Yeah, look, it's, it's done more than a litre already. <laughs> Shit. Right, so I'm gonna put the drain plug back in. It's still coming out the bottom there with a the new uh, washer on, of course. And then we'll uh, fill it back up and, yeah. Hopefully this will fix the Volvo gearbox issue. Right, so I took that five liters into the Volvo. Uh, well, what was left is like four liters. And I, uh, I measured. I chucked what came out of the drain pan into, uh, into this Gary here. Five liters, so. 
It only drained five litres out of the uh, pan on the transmission fluid. I was expecting to put, well, I've got, I think I've got 15 litres of transmission fluid, because I, I heard the capacity was 10 to 12 litres, which is a bit odd, isn't it? So this, this is definitely not a tutorial, because um, I've clearly not got all the fluid out somehow. Maybe I've done something wrong. Cracked the uh, plug, let it all drain out, and I know there'll still be some in the lines, but surely not another five litres. Mm, a bit strange. Another thing. Check out the size of the oil filter on the Volvo. It's massive. It's a proper handful. I'm changing the engine oil as well because I've, I've got the oil sitting there and I've got the filter. I've just not had time to do it, but I thought while we're under it and while we're getting dirty and getting his hands full of oil and stuff, we may as well change the engine oil as well. So, um, yeah, nearly done and then hopefully it'll be alright when we, when we drive it afterwards, eh? Right, I've just refilled the engine oil. Uh, I'm not gonna do any more tonight though. So it's gonna be the end of part one of is the Volvo fucked or not? Let's find out. I don't think I'm gonna call the video that, but maybe I should. Right, I don't actually think I've changed my transmission fluid properly here. I think I've probably changed half of it based on the fact that I got five liters out of the, uh, out of the sump and then uh, it was meant to be like 10 liters in there. So I'm not gonna start it just yet. I've just refilled the engine oil, so that's, that's all good. I've got oil in my air and stuff. It's not good, is it? Uh, so I've just finished um, topping up the engine oil again. So I've got fresh engine oil, that's all good. New filter and all that stuff. Uh, the sump plug on the Volvo didn't have a washer on it and it was leaking. So it's got a washer on now, so hopefully no more leaks. But uh, yeah, I'm not convinced I've actually changed my transmission fluid tonight. I think I've just maybe changed half of it or recycled half of it. Because I've put five litres back in which is what I removed, but like I said earlier, it's meant to take like 10 this system. Oh, that's what I read online. Maybe the information I read online was wrong and that like, everything's gonna be fine and we'll be, we'll be perfect. But I'm gonna leave the car for tonight because it's getting late, it's half past nine. Um, I know it's pretty bright still, isn't it? I know, I know, right? You've not been down here for a while. It gets, uh, stays quite light at night, which is nice. Right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back tomorrow and then we'll uh, take the car out, see how it drives. And I'm gonna do a bit of research tonight as well and just double check that I've actually drained the uh, the right stuff. I, I, I've definitely drained transmission fluid and I don't have to put transmission fluid back in it, but it's, um, yeah, like I say, it only took five litres and I was expecting it to take a lot more than that. Um, so, but I can't, I can't see there being an extra five litres in the lines and in the little bit on the radiator and that. There definitely can't be five litres there, so. Yeah. And it was full before I emptied it as well, just to be, just to be clear, it was full before I emptied it. Uh, really brown as well, so hopefully the fresh transmission fluid is going to make a decent improvement on the gearbox. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think anything's wrong with the Volvo. So apart from this little maintenance that we're doing tonight, um, I say when I took it out, the only issues that I was getting was with the gearbox. And um, I've had these issues with the gearbox for a while anyway, so you know, hopefully the fluid change solved that. Who knows? We'll find out in the next video. Hopefully my voice comes back in the next video as well, because I, I sound a bit daft now, don't I? But uh, yeah, who gets a cold in spring? Me. I do. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, or whenever I upload this, it'll be in a bit. Oh, and um, I want to start doing more videos again, more, more actively. I've had a bit of time off, you might have noticed, but it doesn't seem to be helping me in the way that I thought it would, so back on with the videos, keep me busy, and then, uh, yeah, you're going to be seeing some more videos, perhaps not of the quality of Nürburgring and track days and stuff like that, we'll be doing some more videos where we're just you know, talking and fucking about with cars, which I know a lot of you appreciate anyway, so, yeah, we'll just keep doing this kind of thing. Tune. Oh, this reminds me of a layer cake, this song, with the Aura 6. Alright, I'll see you next video.